Um, and I learned, like, I kind of learned everything that I know about the Hershey's from three people, and two uh, listening to this lecture, which is a kind of embarrassing situation. Maybe Danielle and Luca. <laughs> so, uh, okay. So, last time um, I said that this is an illustrated guide, and so I want to give lots of pictures, but you need some formalism for uh, for Hershey's, and that's what today will be. So, what I'll explain is the constructible derived category and how to glue key structures. Uh, and so there will be less pictures and more derived categories and triangular categories and things like that. Um, so here's a kind of historical uh, claim. So there's this amazing fact that when, uh, so McPherson and Goretzky had discovered intersection cohomology and they were, there's this amazing incident where they were talking, where McPherson was talking to the lean in Paris at the FES, I guess. And Deline wrote down this formula for what the intersection complex should be in terms of the derived category. And at that point, McPherson did not know what a derived category was. And so he went back to the States and he said to Goretzky, we have to learn what derived categories are. And derived categories allow you to show, for example, topological invariants and things like that. It was very hard to show from the original perspective of intersection cohomology. And I think that this is a, a claim that may or may not be true, but it seems that if you read McPherson's papers, he's kind of always a little bit, uh, maybe not so happy with the right category. So he kind of wants to, he kind of wants to, at the end of the day, explain perversions in another way that do not involve the right categories. And I think that in the last 20 years, we've become more used to derived categories, and there are kind of we view, we view them not just as a tool, but as a kind of beautiful thing in themselves. So if you think about stability conditions and bridge lands work and things like that. And so uh, that's the kind of perspective change in this lecture that now we have to use the right categories in or order to introduce perverse sheaves, but they're no longer something that we want to avoid. It's something very, very nice. So the kind of starting point for the right categories of this basic philosophy. Oh, and the other thing that I, I wanted to say is that uh, if you do not try to do the exercises, you will be lost within the next few lectures. I guarantee it. If you do try to do the exercises, I can't make any guarantees. But, so not enough people have asked me about the exercises if you, can, if you want to continue following this course. But uh, I mean, of course, you can just enjoy pizza. No problem. <laughs> If you want to understand the course, you must try to do it. Um, so a basic philosophy. Is that um, cohomology is bad <coughs> and the whole thing. So a very simple example of this is the so-called universal coefficient theorem. Which says that, um, so K is a, is a ring of coefficients. As, la as the last time. So, for example, a finite field or, or Q or something, then um, it tells you that the cohomology of X with coefficients in K is the cohomology of X with coefficients in Z tensor over Z in K <coughs> plus this kind of mysterious term. <laughs> and this is a kind of, and, and this is not phenomenal.
And this is a kind of annoying, annoying formula that you have to remember. But um, this follows easily. So um, if we just consider the complexes rather than homology, So, if we let C um, if we let C Z and C K be the complexes, calculating. Um, then we have the much better formula that CK is just the basic. Just the in the derived in the derived category. So these are these are just these are complex of Z modules, which are the complex of K modules. And then the universal coefficient theorem. <laughs> the left derived functor Offensive. So that means that instead of so this is in print this might have some torsion in it, and I should replace the torsion with free free Z modules. <coughs> I should take a projective or an injective resolution before calculating this. And also of K. No, it should be. I, I mean I, I can do one side. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Or, or I can, or, yeah, I can yeah. or I can just take a resolution of K. And Most you, of the case, C Z will be made of three modules. <coughs> Sorry. Most of the case, if you take single two modules, C Z will be a three module. Yes. So you don't need to do anything. Um, and the universal coefficient theorem. follows from the fact that CZ is isomorphic in the derived category of Z modules to its cohomology sheets, which is which is just a fact about which is a fact about Z modules that this is always the case. Um, that um, you know this formula is kind of ugly but it's expressing the shadow of this much nicer formula which we can express in this way precisely because of this fact that Z is not so complicated homology. Okay and last time <coughs> last time I was writing down things like I was writing down things like the um, chief so did the pre sheet. So we considered so we did this we did this example of elliptic curves. And we saw this interesting local system that we get by taking the H1 of this family of elliptic curves. And this is what this is the kind of thing that we're writing down. But this philosophy tells us that this is bad. Then instead we should instead we should have some um, complex of sheaves whose cohomology sheaves are these things in order. So we consider 
<coughs> v of x to be the derived category. No, no finite best conditions here whatsoever. And so this has a, a shift functor. So it's just category of uh, complexes. Category of complexes where I invert, invert here I invert quasi isomorphic. And then the shift functor is the shifting of, of, sheaves, of, of, of sheaves of k modules on And we also have HI, which is the i cohomology function. And this is and this is a sheaf. So whenever I write a square H like this, this will be something like taking the cohomology of a space or taking the cohomology of a, a sheaf on a space and it will produce a k-module. Whenever I write this, this will be just the cohomology sheaves in the sense of a derived category. Whenever I have an abelian, whenever I have a derived category for an abelian category, and I have an object, I can take its cohomology sheaves and I get an object of that abelian category, which is this. So HI is a fun is a fun for DB of X. And now recall from last time, we saw the notion we saw the notion of a local system, which is a locally constant sheet with finitely generated thoughts. And then we had the notion of a constructible sheet, which is so we have the definition a constructible sheet. So, <coughs> so fix that. Stratification of x into an equally singular strata, and then we have um, the notion of so a sheaf. I'm just recalling this from last time. Is lambda constructible if um, f restricted to each strata is a local system on that strata? And it's constructible if it's lambda constructible for some and now um, so a <coughs> lambda constructible Complex is an object, so it's some complex of sheaves such that its cohomology sheaves are bounded such that HI of X is lambda constructible. Roll I. And zero for i. So it's only got cohomology sheaves in finitely many degrees. And you've got non-zero cohomology sheaves in finitely many degrees. And then um, we have constructible complex. <coughs> it's the same notion. Right? Um, if lambda
and then we denote dB C of X, let's say lambda and X with a full subcategory of D of X consisting of lambda constructible. And this would be extremely complicated if we took that definition. Because inject injective sheaves would not be constructed in any way. Well, or, or the other, otherwise, 
You said that it's hard. It would be hard, but would be, yeah, the so result would be the same. So I think that at least in in the setup of in our setting setting of complex varieties, um, they are equivalent, but this is kind of a lot of work after the fact. It would be a nightmare to develop the theory from this definition. Um, that's the second remark. Third, the third remark is that um, so, somehow um, is um, is generated so as a triangular category by day lower tree of, of, of I than the tree of L where um, L is a lower okay, lambda and I lambda. And so in some sense we have a nice set of generators for our category. Or we could take I, I lower stuff. And possibly one, one final remark that I'll also only say verbally is that if you consider um, just to derive the, what happens on a point. So derive category of, um, and let's say K is a field. So, the derived category of sheaves is just the derived category of all k vector spaces, and constructible sheaves are precisely the derived category of, um, of complexes of vector spaces that have finite dimensional cohomology sheaves. However, this is easily, in this case, seen to be equivalent just to the derived category of finite dimensional vector spaces, bound the derived category of finite dimensional vector spaces. And this is exactly the subcategory on which duality has some sensible properties. If you take the dual of some you know, enormous complexes, there'll be no, for example, d squared equals identity or anything, but on this, on this subcategory of finite dimensional vector spaces, duality works. And that's what we'll talk about now is BDA duality, I think. So the goal, so the starting point, which says that, so if we have x of complex dimension n, and we assume it's smooth, Then the Verdier duality says that we have, and let's say k is a field. And so Poincaré duality says that we have a canonical isomorphism. Where this is a funny notation for cohomology with compact supports. And I, I will try to explain later why, why I want to use this notation in the course. So this is our... And what is L? And L is a local system. In your second remark, um, what operations do you allow to generate this subcategory? I mean, like shifts and... Yeah, so this is just as a triangular category, so I allow shifts and codes to... Okay, four triangular. <laughs> And this is cohomology with compact. And so what one would like to do is to be able to plug in any constructible sheaf here. But if you think about a constructible sheaf, it doesn't really, this, this n shouldn't really play a role because if I consider um, 
the extension by zero of a, of a sheaf on some subvariety, this just behaves the same as if the sheaf were on the, on the subvariety. Okay, so if I just take a closed subvariety inside my space, and I consider a local system on this smooth closed subvariety, this, um, so we'll be clear what I'm doing. Exercises, we see that um, star asking for star. Uh, now it doesn't matter. I mean, but, you know, you can always. This is kind of what I was saying before. You could always assume that it's smooth by embedding it in something. I guess F is speed. Right? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. So, um, in the exercises that I explained, oh, oh, so the, the, the point is that star, if you want this also, if you want a duality also with respect to any, any map, not just the map to a point, so you also have duality, for example, in families, then this is equivalent, so it implies the existence. Of a right. So this is just purely formal. If you would like something like this in sufficient generality, then this function of Hilo or Shri is the right function of sections with compact support. What is this deal to write? Sorry? What is uh, D is the right style? Yeah, so D, what we're looking for is some generalization of this taking the jewel of a local system. So this should be some. Wait, wait. Is there this chip? Yes, taking the jewel of a local system. So, well, one way to say it is it is the equivalent to vector space. It's equivalent to representation of some group, and we take the jewel of the representation. Or you know, another way of saying it is just a tom with the constant vector system. So sorry, it's tom with the constant vector system. Well, what is this R D for star? So this is the um, so we, we have P lower star, which is a a bunker from I mean 
is the fund guarantees, which is sectioned with compact support. I mean, let's just say F for a general that. <coughs> So this is um, so F lower street is um, so I mean I can write down the formal definition but um, I kind of hope that most people have seen it before. Um, but if, for example, to a point, it's just the sections of your sheet such that the support of this section is complex. It's, it's a relative version of that. And this is the derived fund for a section. Not, not really, I mean, compact support in the vertical direction. Yeah, exactly. Rel relative compact support. Yeah. Generally, duality on a on a category is a contravariant 
equivalence that squares to zero. After ID, you have some zero n in what? Well, let's just delete this. So all of this is only defined or makes sense on the constructed in the right category. So let's consider the n right homology of x. That's true. But uh, in general, can we also define what all shifts? Yeah, but it's not. Like, it, um, I mean, so you, you can write down this functor. So the, the actuate will only exist on um, a control, <coughs> when that's not true. It seems. No, the proper map of finite homology dimension is only. Okay, there I'm not sure. If F, if F, if R P lower three has an adjoint on the whole category, but probably somewhere. Else. <coughs> locally compact mm. spaces. You need to yeah. ask. Yeah, yeah locally compact. Yeah, exactly. <coughs> so, <coughs> yeah, so probably it's okay. Yeah. Can you find the homological dimension of five? Yeah. Yeah. And you need. RP lower shriek, like you, you need RP lower shriek to make sense, and then it's probably okay. Um, but then, uh, and this, this clearly only makes sense on the construction. So now, what's this? This is um, the cohomology of the direct image of the constant shriek. which I can rewrite as H minus I of the jewel <coughs> of F lower star. So this just uses the So on a point this duality is just on this normal duality on vector spaces. And by the way, uh, upstairs, don't you need a script H in the middle of the top board? So, in, in the middle row, on the left, should it be script H? No, I really mean the, the com, I really mean the homology of X with values in F. No, no, in the middle row, next row. H, I, P, e, no, oh. Well, it's yes, the same. But on a point, I'll also write square edge. Okay. Um, and so now we can use up these wonderful relations. Firstly, we can move D from F lower star to get F lower shriek. And then we apply D to the dualizing sheet. And so we assume that X is smooth. And so this would be F lower shriek of the dualizing sheet. And now we use the x blue. Use the h minus i. So, I mean, this morning I tried to change myself from p f to p for the map to a point, but I think I'd be like that. Um, Kx to n, where we use this property. So this is H, 2n minus I, 3, all So this is the derived, this is pushing to the constant chief to a point. This cohomology pushing the constant chief to a point using lower shriek. Um, is cohomology is complex. And there's some shifts in here that might not be obvious if you're not so familiar with the right category, so it's probably nice to go through the, go through the shifts. Uh, 
what is this example? So you're using the Gautier coherence or proving the Gautier coherence in this I just say, so basically, in the exercises, if we want star, then we're forced to have an adjoint to RP lower tree. So you assume the adjoint exists. Basically. Yeah, now we assume the adjoint exists. And this is also formal. Everything here is formal. Yes. And then from that, from this formal blah, 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 I'm just rederiving a, a proof of punk razor if this format, formal setup exists. So how do we get from H pi, how do we get H negative pi? Just because if you think about taking a complex of vector spaces and then taking its dual. So it's a script H. You've got the right script H. Yes, but this is not a point. I mean, you can write script H everywhere here if you want, but I would prefer on a point just to write normal H, because that's the same thing as this complex of the vector space. Yeah, it's not obvious. Sorry? Then it's not obvious when you are using your dual duality or proving it. OK. Um, and so some more exercises. <laughs> oh, so theorem. Theorem. <laughs> is that um, there exists so that this so for any for any polarism f from x to y of the regular map that I've right? there exists So all this actually makes sense. And then the exercise, which are on the sheet, but I will remind you of them, um, show that that F lower tree just on sheaves <coughs> does not have an adjoint in middle. So the moral of this exercise is that the passage to the derived category is essential to make the radiate work. The second exercise is just an advertisement to try through the exercise is, you know, people are usually scared of this guy. But there's no real need to be scared of it. Um, so, so explicit description. Of, for an inclusion so if um, if J is an open inclusion then J up at tree is J up at star and if um, for J general J upper tree is um, sections with support. In Z, so, <coughs> so if you're familiar with, for example, coherent sheaves, the, the functor that takes um, sections of a coherent sheaf supported and separated as derived functors are extremely important. And this is the analog for constructible sheets at that point. Right? And the, the, other, the other fact that I forgot to mention here, which is also important. In the exercises, I mean it's subversion. And this 
Now on basically whenever I write a, a functor, I'll assume that I'm using the derived functor. So from now on, we redefine f dollar star the derived functor of f dollar star. F Deductions are extremely important that we use them all the time. The second thing are the so called open closed distinguished triangles. So I won't recall what a triangulated category is, but just remember that it's something that has a shift functor and it has a notion of triangles which are which one should think about as being short exact sequences of problems. Um, so what this <coughs> says is that if I decompose my space into a closed sub variety and its complement Then we have a 
factorial distinguished triangles. Combine them in an octahedron, although it's yes. hard to draw, but I mean, they fit in a big octahedron. So, in Ivo Gluka had this exercise which was he gave this octahedron, and the exercise was contemplate the octahedron. Yeah. <laughs> and then continue to con contemplate it. <laughs> I was trying to find your exercises, actually. Mm -hmm. I was trying to find your exercises for the Ivo Gluka. They disappeared, I Do you uh -huh. still have them? I don't have them. Oh, no. <laughs> so, um, Property um, three, I think I've already covered, is okay. valid. by 
applying duality of things, you can get lots of lots of other identities. But the important consequence is that if P is proper, oh, so I forgot one property, which is important, which is let's say 2.5, we have a morphism. So if you think on the level of If you think on the level of sheaves, this functor is section satisfying some condition. And so you have an inclusion here, and this leads to a morphism, a functor from the derived category, which is an ISO. <coughs> So f lower shriek is just equal to f lower star if it's proper. So this says that if p is proper, then and um, and x and this y prime is a point, then is a point. Let's say. the stalk at y is the same thing as um, as p prime dollar star of our sheep is two to the So let's think about what this says for a constant sheaf. We have some, we have a map, and we have a constant sheaf upstairs, and it's just telling us that the, the, the stalks of the direct image are complexes calculating the cohomology of the fibers of our map. And so this is kind of precisely what we we're looking for at the start of the lecture. Some, some complex that patches together all of, all of the cohomologies of our <coughs> family. And so this is the thing, at the start of the lecture I was saying that it's bad that we were looking at these cohomology groups that... Sorry? Yeah? Uh, the second triangle is wrong. Yeah. <coughs> this triangle is wrong. Wait, no, the first one. Well, you mean, I mean, I can put a star here. Yeah, that's the same. Um, and then, uh, and now I just want to draw a board, which is. Yeah. Uh, so you have lower index y on the left hand side and the bar on the right hand side. Is it the same? Lower index y. No, no, lower index y on the left hand side, but on the right hand side you have some bar. Yeah, which just means restriction to the file. Restriction of the shape of the file. Mm -hmm. Which shape? F. F is complex. Well, F is a complex. Restriction of the complex is the file. And y on the left hand side it's the same, right? It's this, I mean, this is little y. So our lower indices on the left hand side and on the right hand side, do they mean the same? Yes. No, because one needs bar and another doesn't. Ah, so if I, if, I, if I have a point, I write the stalk as a sub y. But if I have a sub, a sub variety, I write the restriction. Oh, I see. <coughs> Is any one of the lower, uh, which parts, or any one of the lower, yeah. no. So maybe I said this badly, like, like, this is too complicated. Let's just say we have a map, which we call F. 
and we want to know what's H. Take the cohomology sheet of F lower star for the constant sheet. And we want to know what is it at Y. And the proper base change theorem tells us that it is the i cohomology of the phi. So this is this was the whole point of this sentence. So we have this wonderful complex on the right that combines all of the cohomologies to fibers in a nice way. And the other uh, hand of this works with any, any sheet form. So now um, maybe we take a um, seven minute break and we'll continue. So I started all this discussion by, <coughs> by saying we have this abelian category and this derived category, and then we want to, just, we want to find abelian categories that are candidates for, for producing this derived category. So it's natural, we produce this abelian category as the heart, and it's natural to ask what is the, is, is the derived category of the, of the heart equal to the abelian category? So D is a derived category, and D less than or equal to zero. P structure, we can set H to the heart of its head. And there always exists um, a functor from the bounded derived category of A. D, but it's not an equivalent. In general. And, it's an, and we'll, there's examples, very nice examples on the exercise sheet where you see that it's not an equivalent and how far away it can be from being equivalent. But there's this lovely quote for this function is called realization. And then Bailinson um, says that if real is an equivalence, the niche. So it's extremely enjoyable, I think, just to read the introductions to Bailinson's papers because he just uses beautiful language. And here's an example: the niche D, where A dwells. Maybe a very nice piece of English. Um, so thank you.